In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic looking rim light around a photograph inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I've got a fun tutorial for you. We're going to take this picture of this fierce looking woman and we're going to really make it pop because right now she just kind of melts into the background. What would have been really nice would have been some nice rim lights when this photograph was shot. Now of course you can't go back and relight it but you can do it in Photoshop and it's actually a lot easier than you think to add a realistic looking rim light. We're going to have a look at that right now. I'm going to show you all the steps to create that rim light. And then at the end, we're going to look at some variations, like maybe if we wanted to use simulate colored gels and different things like that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to cut this out so we can isolate it from the background. Really, we just want to get those edges. We'll use the background. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go here and we're going to click on a quick selection tool. Now, if you're using a version of Photoshop earlier than 2019, CC 2019, just make that selection. If you're using CC 2019 or newer, then all we need to do is click on Select Subject. And now it will use uh, Adobe Sensei, which is the AI built into Photoshop to find that subject for you. So it's already selected it. Great. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the edges around the hair. So we're going to choose select a mask. Now, if you don't see this background like I'm seeing here, what you want to do is go up the top here and make sure under view that you're choosing on white. Now, you also want to take that opacity here all the way up and that shows you the edge. Now, this is not a great selection. In fact, I probably should use a pen tool to get a much better edge on there and I've got tutorials on that but for the sake of this tutorial this will be good enough. So what we want to do is kind of clean up around the edge of the hair. So we're going to go there and we're going to select our selection tool here. This is our cleanup tool and what we want to do is just use the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger and you want a small brush and we're just going to go around the edge about halfway on, halfway off to select that side. Now we're going to select the other side. Do the same thing. Now notice as I do that it also refines the selection on the other side. So this is good enough of what we need to do. Let's go down now to the bottom where it says output and we're going to output to a new layer with a layer mask. Click OK. Alright. In this case we can actually just turn our background back on again. And so what we're now we've got is our shape here and our edge. And this is really what we want is this mask. All right, so why don't we light up the photo right now, just the whole thing. So go down to our adjustment layers. We're going to go down and we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. Now with curves open, we grab it about three quarters of the way there and we're just going to drag this up and blast it with light. So this makes it look like now we've got this light, this very, very bright light on there. Okay, let's go very bright. So this is the kind of light we want to have for the rim because generally a rim light is a pretty strong light. But we don't want to use the whole photograph. I'll show you how to isolate it. But the other thing we want to do is add a little bit of color to it. I want to warm this up. So why don't we click on RGB and we'll see our color channels. I actually want to add some yellow. Notice there's no yellow there. But the opposite of yellow is blue. So choose the blue channel. And then we're just going to pull it down just a little bit to reduce the amount of blue and our highlights. And notice what it does is it adds a warmer kind of a yellow tone, which simulates like a tungsten light. That's great. So now what we want to do is we want to isolate it just to this area. But before we do, we're actually just going to hide it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our curves there. And I'm just going to hit the control or command key because I want to select this mask. So hold the control command, you'll see this icon. Go over the layer mask, tap once, and now we've loaded the selection from that mask. But we're actually going to apply it up here to our mask on the curve. So what we want to do is actually just hide that curve over the entire face, but just on the face. So we want to have the shape of the face. All right, so what we need to do is fill that with black. So hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors. Notice inside the mask that black is the background. Hit the X key, make it the foreground. 
or hit the X and keep it back. It doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this now with black, which is the background. So that's going to be Command Delete on Mac, Control Backspace on Windows, fills it with black. And now we can just hit Control D to turn off the selection. And if we look at this, this is not doing anything because we've just kind of cut it out in that shape. So what we want to do now is nudge this mask over so we can just reveal the rim. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our curves are turned on and see where this chain is. Click that chain. That will unlink the mask from the curves adjustment. And it will enable me to move this mask by itself. I could click and drag it or just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to just kind of nudge it over a little bit. See what's happening there. All right, so now we can kind of see how it's starting to reveal that rim around there. Obviously, it doesn't look very real because it's, it's very kind of harsh. So what we want to do is make that edge soft. So make sure that that layer mask is selected. Go to the Properties panel and go under Feather. All right, so we're just going to pull this feather up a little bit until we get this nice fall off. See what we're getting here? See how the ear and the cheek and here is starting to look like there's a little bit of light hitting it. In fact, why don't we go up to this mask? We're going to select that mask again, and I'm just going to nudge it more in the keyboard. And notice how I can move this over to change the effect. See that? Or I can just simply click and drag if I want to drag this mask around. See how I can have it rim lit on that side, or I can have it rim lit on this side. Okay, so why don't we go here? We're going to rim light that side, but I'd also like to do the other side. Well, here's how we do it. We're just going to grab our marquee tool Start about the middle and let's make a selection all the way around here. So now we're just selecting this side of the mask on the right side. So now we grab the move tool and we can nudge this over. And watch what happens as we do that. See how now we can have a rim light starting to just kiss the other side of her right now and just hit enter to apply it. All right, so let's see what we've got so far, before and after. See, now we're starting to simulate that rim light. Okay, so why don't we go in here and we're just going to refine this a little bit. So I'm going to select on this mask. And what I will do is if I paint with white, so let's grab my brush. If I paint with white, notice it shows that rim light. If I paint with black, notice it takes it away. Okay, so why don't we get a nice big soft edge brush. So we're going to go here, make sure hardness is turned down, and we've got a nice soft brush. Make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to hit the X key, so I'm painting now with white. And I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 30%. So that's the 3 key, we'll drop that opacity. And now let's just kind of brush it over, so it's just kind of lighting up that ear a little bit more. Look at that. Now if you're using a pressure-sensitive Wacom tablet like I am, you can also grab your brush properties here and you want to set opacity to pen pressure and turn off shape dynamics for the size. Otherwise, just work with a mouse. Now, because I'm using a Wacom pen, I can turn the opacity up and just use pen pressure to slowly fade this in. Once again, if you're using a mouse, then just drop the opacity down and just build it up with strokes. All right. So what we're going to do is just let this light just kind of come up a little bit and we're just kind of hitting it there, maybe going a little far, but that's okay. Great. So we've got just a little bit more of that and see how it's just kind of in the edge of the hair. So you can enhance it if you want. All right, so now I'm going to hit the X key. I'm going to switch it out to black. And one of the things I notice when I look at pictures, and by the way, what you want to do is look at references of rim light and that way you can have a more realistic looking result. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go up around the eyes here because I noticed when I look at the references that there was a little bit more of a shadow on the edge of the eyes here just because of the shape of the face and the way the rim light hits. Now down the bottom here we want that light to go a little bit. We want it to extend into the chin. So make sure we're working with the white. Drop the brush size down nice and small and then we can just paint down here and just continue there to add that rim light in fact, why don't I make that a little bit bigger? Let's make it bigger, and we're just going to kind of drop that down. Make it too big. 
There we go. Now, if I hit the X key and go to the black, drop the brush size down a little bit, I can just kind of chisel that out. See what I'm doing there as I'm just kind of just painting that back, getting under there. And now it's showing that. Let me go into the very bottom of the chin, make sure we don't have any light hitting it. So now if we look at this, there's before and there's after, we're starting to get a lot closer. There's little areas we can touch this up, like here on the shoulders. And maybe where the curves go here, we could kind of just, because if you look at the light, it's gonna kind of hit these peaks and not so much some of the other areas sometimes. So let's just kind of drop it back a little bit there. And so what we've got now is if we look at this before, look at the edges of the hair, the ears, the cheeks, the chin, turn that on, boom, we've got more light. If you wanted to add more light in here, of course you could. Now, I did mention I was going to show you how to do something that looked like a colored gel. If you wanted to do the gels, just go under here and then just go under the colors here under red, green, and blue, and we could select different colors. Say, for example, we're green. If we pull this down, see how we can do that nice magenta kind of a gel look there? Or we could go up the other way. We could make it look more greenish. So you can choose those different colors to simulate those different colored gels. So anyway, I'm curious if you learned anything new in this tutorial, let me know in the comments underneath. Also, let me know what it is that you'd love to learn here inside of Photoshop, and I'll do my best to do a kind of tutorial that you would like to see. So if you're new to Photoshop Cafe and you haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right now. You'll become part of the Cafe crew and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring that notification bell so you know when I upload it, which is usually every Tuesday. If you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.